and we are live. So, hello everybody, Jim Gonzalez. Uh, I have a special guest today. Uh, it is Wednesday. It is dreary here in Pennsylvania, um, and I have uh, my friend, cohort, subject matter expert in healthcare, uh, Peter Raybolt, joining me. And I would love to let Peter introduce himself, tell you who he is, and what he does. Uh, okay. How you doing, Jim? First of all, uh, I really appreciate you putting on these events that, you know, I'm a loyal watcher of, uh, of your videos and such. So, but in this particular case, it turned out to be just the perfect time for us to uh, get together in what's happening in healthcare. I mean, at this point, um, we were just talking about how in local media, you're not hearing enough about the problems with uh, change healthcare, but um, a little about myself. So I've been in the business for 40 years. Um, in 88, we went out on our own and created synchronized systems. In synchronized systems, I've developed applications all related around healthcare transaction sets. So eligibility, claiming, payments, uh, acknowledgements, all the different things that are on the healthcare side that balance what you do on the retail side. So I've created applications because in, in healthcare, most people have a practice management system, but that does a thousand things and it does most of them okay, but a lot of things it either doesn't do well or it doesn't do at all. So I realized creating these spe uh, specific applications that if you need eligibility, your eligibility is not working, I can help you replace that without replacing the whole thing. And with that, comes the man, meaning comes me and my experience. I've run revenue cycle. I know it from a developer point. I know it from subject matter point. And I know it from actually being, you know, down in the, the weeds with problems and helping people with denial management and that type of thing. So uh, I offer all three of those and then the applications come with that. So over time, I've done applications for every different transaction set, use them in all different type of ways of giving people these solutions. And then now in the last couple of years, my subject matter expertise option where technology teams want to create their own solutions, but they don't know EDI enough and they don't want to learn uh, the whole Megillah. So they'll, they want to know 10% of what they need and therefore they're hiring an expert and keep me on on an ongoing basis to help them get by and do it internally into their applications. And that, and that's, that's awesome, Peter. And, just so everybody knows, Peter is my is my go to cohort when it comes to anything related to EDI healthcare. Um, we've done some healthcare. We've actually done some. We've done a project together yeah. um, where you know people are people are looking for that expertise and hey, how does the business process work or how? And I was like, listen, if you want somebody that knows healthcare business process inside and out, Peter's your person. Um, so there's hopefully in time, there's going to be many more of those projects that come into EDI support LLC. We work on them together as basically Peter, the subject matter expert, my team grinding out and doing different things inside of the applications that we help to support. And if you need a standalone, again, remember Peter has options for you. He has pieces that can particularly work without interfering with something that you already have existing. So right. that's the big thing about that, uh, because in, in larger installations, you know, the, the millions that they spend on these applications, they're so embedded, they cannot get rid of them, but yep. yet they, you know, they still have a particular issue. And often the issue is, well, we just can't solve it because we can't give up the big system, but my, uh, translations fit in, in between. It's like fitting into the workflow. Once you fit it into the workflow, uh, and again, I think the, the unique part is not only the solution itself, but the ability to stand behind it. So they get an expert with it. And I think that's where the advantage is, is that not only, okay, you have an eligibility solution, but when you start having questions about the eligibility, how does it work? What's going on? That's my expertise that steps into that. And then of course, being able to say, I've run through the revenue cycle. I've been there. I've been in the weeds with you. I understand all the terminology. So those three pieces, you know, core three pieces of that hopefully make me unique in this area where there are not too many people, you know, in the country that have that developer expert and um, the the actual running the revenue cycle. 
I, I, I completely agree, Peter. It, it's a great aspect. It's a great way of having it all together. Um, so what we want to talk about today is, you know, let's focus in on the consequences of UHGs, which if some people don't know who UHG is, it's United Healthcare Groups, Change Healthcare Cyber Attack. And what you need to know about it, that the crazy part is, they're not showing on or not really showing and emphasizing on the general media um, for people. There's a lot of companies, a lot of organizations, a lot of individuals that are being affected by this system being down. So the change healthcare system being down and out of certain pieces, aspects, and all of those things are really hurting people. So Peter, give Give me some insight. Let's let's jump into what exactly happened and why should we be concerned about it? Yeah. So Change Healthcare has, in the last five years, uh, have become the uh, go-to organization for all different kinds of uh, translations. And much what happens is in claiming or in prescriptions, when you send information, it's not going directly to payer anymore. It used to. But then you have uh, a middleman which is either a clearinghouse or a switch. And it sounds, you know, it's exactly what it sounds like. They are switching the claims to uh, the particular payer. Instead of having to sign up directly with 14 payers, you sign up with the clearinghouse or with the switch. And then the switch has those direct relationships with, uh, with all the payers. So clear, um, uh, Change Healthcare became one of those, uh, got into, became, uh, I believe, the largest prescription processor. So therefore, being a switch for that, where between the pharmacy and the pharmacy benefit managers on the payer side, so the PBMs, they basically stood in between that. They deal with places for coupons for people that have prescriptions that are too expensive. You can use something like GoodRx and you can hopefully get a discount off of that. So they, they had connection to that. Uh, when it came to claiming, hospitals and clinics and all sent data through um, Change Healthcare. So they... They had a lot going on in, in this. And um, so as being that, all of a sudden, somewhere, somehow, um, what we've been reported is a nation state actor uh, attacked them, cyber attack. And in doing that, they recognize that they need to disconnect their system from the world. And you can imagine with all of this transaction processing going through that all of a sudden, all of their services, and they have, I think, probably over 100 hundred services that in, in different ways, amazing the conglomerate of what's going on there. And they disconnected that from the world. And you can imagine how it just stopped. And, and that's, that's crazy to me because you're talking, you know, to give people a realistic understanding as to what this means. In the United States, there's reported and it could exceed this, but the last numbers I seen was around 330 million people. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're talking about a leading prescription for plan processor in change healthcare, which also is affiliated with Optum. So it's, right. a, it's like a bouncing ball of knowing who are all these almost, almost like monopoly. You know, I'm not, I'm not here to, to judge, but it, it's a pretty big outfit that's going on here. One, right. in, what they're saying is one in three. Right. Get processed in three. through them. So think about that if, in a reality aspect one in three are being processed through this one exchange and you know it blows my mind because you know as you had described everybody's pushing one connection change healthcare can get you connected to everybody or as many connections as they have and you know they'll use different interconnects and other different things that go on there right right but it's one so now once you lose that one connection and it's down and it's been down for how many days are we at now, Peter? I think we're at seven or eight now. Seven or eight days. Right. In which that's that number just gets exorbitant. Like the number and the backlog. And, you know, when 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 I know I have data redundancy that's set up in my systems as for a small 10 person company. And I'm willing to bet, Peter, you also have redundancy. In yes, your system. absolutely. You so, cannot. yeah, exactly. Like this is 2024. It, right. it, it's crazy to me that, yeah, we got to switch off and I get it. Switch off. 
you know, move it to a different, like it, it's like internet. The internet goes down. There's multiple other places that can pick up the traffic. There's multiple other things that can get back the data at a clean point to get the, essentially the plumbing rock running again. Why are we at seven days? And right. you know, well, if it was just a system, let's say a system wide failure, once you solve the system wide failure, everything comes back much like AT&T when they had the three or four hours of that, and then they resolved it and it came back. Uh, the problem here, I, I suspect, is that since it's cyber attack, you're not, you know, you can't clearly identify where the problem is, or there might be multiple points of problems. And to bring it back online, you could be uh, bringing the problems back. So in this time frame, they're taking, uh, you know, to try to investigate cybersecurity investigation to try to figure out exactly where the problems are, and then to clear them up. The the issues that um, we have is that we're trying to help as many people as possible to be able to switch to an alternative. In some cases, there are alternatives. In some cases, it's much harder. Like the, the most immediate problem, I've identified like three different specific generalized categories. Uh, most immediate is prescriptions. Um, what's happening there is that since they were reported to be either close to the largest or the largest prescription processor, all of a sudden prescriptions are not going through or the coupon cards are not going through. So pharmacies or payers are a lot of times asking now the patient to say, you need to pay up front. We'll give you a form that you can fill out and you can submit to us when things get back to normal and then we'll pay you back. But I mean, if this thing is a couple hundred dollars for a medication or insulin or, or cancer drugs, it's it's impossible that that situation is untenable. So that is the biggest problem because it's most immediate. You're dealing with people's lives. Yeah. And that's that's the crazy part. You know, as we had talked about, you know, I we do a, a whole lot in, you know, retail, transportation, supply chain, all of those things. And I always say to them, listen, nobody's going to die if they don't get a carton from from Amazon or right. any of those things. But now when you're talking healthcare and you're talking prescriptions and you're talking about these drugs and now, no, oh, I'm sorry, you have to pull, pull 200, 300, 400 dollars out of your pocket to get that drug that you need to survive. And you're barely making it. Why is it not being reported more and more? And that's where it just it, it blows your mind how it's not really there and people aren't really talking about it. Instead, the media is talking about all kinds of other stuff. So when you're looking at this and you're a an, an institution that's in the hard spot of processing these things, what what could they do if they talk to Peter Rabel? Right. So in, in some cases, to be honest, like in the prescription area, that's that's difficult. So uh, on, right now, what they're trying to do is use other switches. There are other switches that exist, but they're probably one tenth the size. So if you have, um, you know, for an example, a, a pipe, water's going through this huge pipe and all of a sudden that pipe closes and now you have to reroute it. But you have pipes that are one tenth or one one hundredth the size. You're not going to be able to send all that throughput through consistently in the short period of time. Over time, you'll probably be able to do it, but in the short run. So that's one problem right now that, that you know, is beyond what I'm doing. What I'm doing specifically is in the case of healthcare institutions, hospitals, clinics, um, physicians' offices, people that send things every day. They send eligibility verification because in order to see the patient, they got to make sure they have uh, proper insurance, Let's say they, they want to do a medical procedure. They have to make sure they're authorized because everything now, if you're not authorized, if you're not verified, you're not going to get paid. So you have to do that. So if you can't, if, if your uh, verifications are not going through, what are you going to do? Are you going to take on the liability of seeing the patient anyway without really knowing if they're covered or not? Maybe they're, they lost their coverage and now you're seeing them and then you'll never get paid for that. So what we try to help do in those cases is Again, uh, the, the basic thing that um, Change Healthcare is, is a clearinghouse, or should I say a switch? So there are other switches. So we're working with C-suite administrators with their apprehension, because obviously not only getting the current process claims out the door, which is one problem, 
but what about all the payments that are coming in or what about things that are in process? Because one of the other areas of those hundred services I mentioned, uh, Change Healthcare had a revenue cycle um, feature where you could upload payments and then you would work the claims. So you're in the middle of working claims for say, you know, a few hundred thousand dollars and that facility just drops. You don't have that option anymore. You go to log in and it's not there. What happens to those hundred thousand dollars you're working on right now that's sitting in limbo? You know, how do you solve that? So each one of these individual situations, what I've done is try to put my name out there to people to say, if you have a problem, you know, 1-800-PETER, give them a call. We'll go case by case basis. You know, I'm a straight shooter. I'll let you know if I can help you or not and what my resources are. Often, like in the case of eligibility or in the case of claiming, I might have a personal solution of what I've developed that I could give you to get around it. Or if I could just put you in touch with other organizations that do this. I have several uh, clearinghouses that I have worked with over time that I could say, okay, instead of going here, go there. And at least we can sign you up and get you going. But it doesn't happen in minutes. It doesn't happen in hours. It happens in days. And day every day that goes by, dollars go out the door. But and the funny part about that though is again, we're at days. Right, we're so, days already. Yeah. yeah, we're we're days already. So had folks and who knows, because there hasn't been a report, at least that I know of. Are you aware of any report that has stated when this should all be rectified and then it should all be back and clear? Are they No, every day, right. Every day is you know, the, the biggest frustration I see is every day is the same thing. We're having potential outages. It's not potential, but they say potential outages in certain services. It's not certain services. It's most, if not all services. And it'll it'll be out for at least today. That is the comment. See, and that's, and that as EDI professionals, you know, we're scrambling. We're, right. we're, we're, we're looking for, you know, if you're working at some of these facilities and you're helping and you're just that one individual that's doing these EDIs, you're scrambling and going, what can I do? Because your boss is coming down on you yes. to come up with a solution because there was no backup plan. And it, again, that always blows my mind is you don't have a backup plan for something that is so detrimental to not only you and your company, but you and your clientele. Right, right. In You're situations patient. like that, it's the patient that loses ultimately. Yep. So if the patient can't be seen or they can't get the medical procedure or whatever, you know, the situation is there. So it, it definitely, you know, works its way down the line uh, ultimately to the patient. And we said there's about 110 million people that are being affected by this one way or the other. And of course, each one sees it as themselves. So I don't know about that one patient that needs that cancer drug. And they're never going to recover because they're not getting that because they can't afford it or simply the pharmacy is saying, come back tomorrow. There are cases where you can't come back tomorrow. You know, so that that is the most immediate. The second one, as I said, is the C-suite situation where with administrators, because all of a sudden hospitals and clinics and stuff are going to start to feel the financial burden of this, you know, and then and then you're working down the line to, you know, um, other situations that that will come out of that. As you said, there's a lot of tentacles to this. And you're not hearing about it on the media enough. And um, but again, we're trying to do our part to help people through the solutions uh, to get them going again. And I have been successful in that. But um, one of the issues and you and I spoke about this the other day is human nature is some of the largest installations that I deal with don't have a plan B. So they were using their they were all in with change healthcare, And that's fine in, in some ways that you know, this is the place to use and there are advantages to using them. But again, the thought as an as a IT specialist or an EDI support, what if that avenue closes? How do we help our clients through to something else? Well, exactly. And and it blows my mind to think that every, these major institutions have everything going through one, one portal and no backup, no API connection, no no direct connections, you know, again, and this is something we had also talked about, you know, at least with direct connections, yes, it may cost you more money, right? but yeah. you're not, okay, my connection to, uh, again, uh, Blue Shield, yeah, Blue Cross, 
that connection drops, so be it. Listen, we're we're gonna we're working, we're gonna get this this one back up, but we still have the other 20 that are that are running. So right. it it yes, it's a bad scenario for those people and those patients that are just going through that. And I get it. But now it's no longer, you know, one in three, it's maybe one in twelve or one in fifteen. Right. And yes, it's still a bad scenario and it's something that shouldn't be occurring, but you're mitigate that risk is is being lowered and lowered. Right. It's not, it's not everybody. Yeah. Um, you know, and it, it it really comes down to figuring out planning disaster recovery, speaking with individuals like yourself, Peter, that have been doing this for decades and can say, I've been there. Let me be your brain trust. And we try to figure out what's going on and try to figure out how, what can we do to get some money flowing in or get some claims going, get just pieces moving. Yeah. Something as simple as this is one of the bigger ones. Um, a lot of times these clearing houses will offer a all in one service, meaning you pay X money and you can send everything through them and they make it advantageous in that even something where there's a direct connection. But people often don't use the direct connection. They use the clearinghouse because it's just easier to send it all through there. They're paying yeah. one fee anyway. Yep. So one of them is the state Medicaid system. So here in New York, where I am, there's Medicaid system you can send direct. And if you're a smaller place, many times you don't want to pay the clearinghouse fees for unlimited, so you, you send direct. But a lot of people send through the clearinghouse. So when the clearinghouse died or you know situation got stopped, uh, first thing I said is, do you have Medicaid? What are you doing with that? You know, you can go direct. And they kind of forget that you can do that. And then we can rearrange their billing so that they can send out that way. The problem is if there's some API connection, if the API connection, and again, API, um, meaning application programmer interface, it's a direct connect kind of thing over the internet secure that you direct point to point. So, and they're good in a lot of cases. The problem is if the endpoint is down, if change healthcare is your endpoint of this API and they shut down, your application shuts down. I have a, a gentleman who developed an application, all API. He's using a lot of change healthcare. What happened? 90% of what he's doing cannot be worked now. And I had said, we need a backup plan of being able to generate an X12 file. X12 is the formatting of the data that goes on claiming and eligibility and all of that. Because at least if you can generate a file, then you can send it directly or you can send it through their website or there are alternatives at least. But well, API it, direct like that is, is an issue if that endpoint goes down. Exactly. And it's, it's again, it's just getting some of the data moving. Because at least... If some of the data is moving, it's better than no data at all. Right, right. Um, and then you, hey, listen, we, as we know, healthcare, there's a lot of money being made. Um, they're uh, not trying to beat up insurance providers, not trying to beat up, you know, anybody that's out there. There's just a lot of money that moves in the healthcare stream. Yeah. It's the way it happens. Um, but anyways, Peter, any final thoughts that you'd love to share with, with everybody on this topic or about yourself and your company? Well, that this, this particular issue, um, one of the, the final things was the realization that this is not going to be on the third day. It was not going to be fixed by the fourth day. One of the problems is maybe as human beings, we all hope that there's a better tomorrow. The sun will come out tomorrow and everything will be fine. The problem is you have to, re you know, you come from fear you know people are fear c-suite um not only frustration but fear what what are we going to do because often these little places even the neighborhood um kind of places they depend on that uh medicaid state payment to pay for payroll for the next week so if they're not getting that what are they going to do now you know and even up to the hospitals because revenue cycles are thin people are not you know yes a lot of money is flowing you're right jim but it doesn't always mean everybody's making money or everybody has money you know, more and more, the, the payers are paying less, you know, hospitals and, and clinics are asked to do more for less, and they're trying to, to work that out. So what's going to happen here is that within a couple of weeks, all of a sudden payments that should have been coming through and not coming through, and it's going to start to snowball. 
Yep. So that the realization of that, the quicker uh, an organization realizes that and wants to, and has to be, uh, you know, active as opposed to reactive, because now I think they're at a point of going, well, hopefully tomorrow it'll get better. But you got to get to a point of saying, all right, we got to do something about this now, because all of a sudden those payments that are supposed to come in are not coming in. We're not billing every day. What are we going to do? You know, so that's part of my thing. I've always been, you know, reality guy about life, about personal, about health and about my business that, you know, you, you can't sit back and hope because hope is not a good business strategy. So in doing that, you know, I'm available kind of like that, you know, that associate, that friend, that lawyer, that person that can advise you the right way to go along. But I have to bring you to that point of realization that you do have a problem and you have to, you know, I can certainly help you to find a solution. So my solutions now as the, um, quotes, EDI doctor, um, <laughs> which again, I, I gladly accept new patients. Um, and, uh, I'm global at this point. So, you know, I've been able fortunate to be able to help people, you know, all over this country and in some cases outside the country. So, um, I'm available for that. And these are the kind of problems that hopefully people like me and, and Jim, your network will be critical to people in getting these solutions so that they can continue. You know, I'm concerned about eventually people defaulting on things because they're not going to have enough income coming in um, in the healthcare space to be able to support that. Yeah. And, and I'm in total agreement with you, Peter. And it's, we've had these discussions. We have them all, you know, offline. We talk a lot. Um, yeah. I, I value you as a, as a subject matter expert. I value you also as a friend. Um, you know, as we've always talked about, we're, we're leading from our heart. We're here to help. We're trying right. to help people. We're trying to um, just really get you a solution. As Peter had also indicated, we're not going to sugarcoat it. We're going to tell you the hard truth of what's going on, what's happening, but it's only to make your organization better and lead you to an answer and a solution. Um, so Peter, thank you for, for jumping in on this. I, I always love having a conversation with mm -hmm. you. I'm going to have Peter's information and how to contact him. And along, you can also contact me. Peter is also on our Discord channel. So, you know, he's under that health court, healthcare channel that's in the Discord. Follow us here on LinkedIn, subscribe to our channel on YouTube, and join our Discord channel to keep learning from experts and get quick answers to your EDI, API questions. We should um, probably do a follow-up, Jim, at one point, too, to see as this progresses. Yes. No, we definitely should. We should definitely keep on uh, keeping people in, in the know of what we're right. seeing and what transpired. Yep. So, Peter, I appreciate you. Thank you, everybody that's watching. Um, join us again. We'll have uh, I try to do every Wednesday. So have a great day. Take care. And we'll be we'll be in touch later on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.